Let me get for those. This is from Aberystwyth to Birmingham, and then I changed buses from Birmingham to Leeds. I met Chris. Birmingham, Birmingham bus station on my way to Leeds. p to go to the loo here there is a waiting room they check your tickets if you sit in the waiting room make sure I guess you're not a bomber
field. Car park for the restaurant. That's the back end of it. My bedroom up there. All the herbs they grow for the restaurant. Skylight.
Oh. You can talk. You can hear. Oh. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi. Hello to me. I can see them. Okay. Oh, yeah. He records every song. Yeah. So if I say <laughs> off of records it. Okay, this one's the bathroom. Huge good bathroom. This is the shambles in York. to an end. In fact, the wall never totally enclosed the city. This area was protected by the River Foss, which was dammed by William the Conqueror to create a lake which was known as the King's Fish Pond from another building. You will see a small door towards the right-hand end. This is known as the Devil's Door and was opened during christening services so that the devil could be cast out. which is one of York's medieval guild halls. Looking to your left, the tin when it was built as a house for the Brose family. In the 1600s, the factory moved out of Coppergate in the 1960s. An archaeological survey took place, which unearthed and completed in the narrow streets running down from Castlegate towards the river. 
This area was where the Danish traders worked over a thousand years ago. Typical Victorian recently passed. And the magistrates court. We now have extremely good footy centres in York. The foot of 2000 may have been bad, but they didn't shut the city down as the television seems to tell the rest of the world. The river roof gets too high, that barrier closes, it starts pumping water out of the river boss, and the U doesn't come back and put the city centre as it used to do. The tower is straight ahead of us. This was where the city wall met the king's fish pond. As we turn right into Leadmill Lane, Look to your right at the stone projection on the wall of the tower. This is known as a guard room, and that was the toilet for the defenders of the wall at this point. The drive from London to York was actually performed by another highwayman, John Neverson, about a hundred years later, and Turpin's first visit to York was at his trial. York to escape the potato famine, which fighting his dragon. We are in Margaret Street, and at the end of the street you will see the gateway to St. Margaret's Church in front of us. And anyone who came in drunk was put in the shed at the back with the pigs and the hens. The only one of the four main gates to retain its bar and gate bar also has an Elizabethan extension. Still there. The bar was an extra line of defence. Anyone wanting to come into the city had to pass through its narrow entrance and guards could inspect them from the walls before deciding whether to admit them or attack them. The outer gate, which no longer exists, was made of iron. This stretch of the city wall was the last to be built because the River Foss and the King's Fish Pond, the pond ditch, were built about 1215 and the stone wall added about 10 years mark it was from 1827 until the 1960s when it moved again to Merton, outside the city up. It stayed that way for over 300 years, only being opened again to provide access to the new cattle market in 1827. The area between the rivers is St George's Field, where an ancient bylaw gives the citizens of York the right to walk, shoot with bows and arrows. We continue on to Skeltergate Bridge and cross the larger of York's two rivers, the Ouse. This bridge was built with an opening span to allow sailing ships to reach the walls. On the right, you will see Ouse Bridge, which was built in 1820 to replace an earlier bridge. In 1154, Ouse Bridge collapsed under the weight of a crowd gathered to welcome Archbishop William saw this happen and knelt to pray for their safety. As we leave Stelgate Bridge, we pick up the city walls again on the right of Bailey Hill, once the site of the second defensive mound built by the Danes and fortified by William the Conqueror. In fact, the city walls you see today were As we proceed along Nunnery Lane, we pass Victoria Bar, the last of York's gateways. It was built in 1838. This part of the city wall gives a good idea of the original height of the fortifications and best shows how they would have looked originally, apart from the car park occupying what used to be the moat, of course. The intermediate towers have been reduced in height. There were 44 of them, and they originally stood much higher than the rest of the wall. The walls and the minster are constructed of magnesium limestone from the Tacaster area, which was brought to York by Rear Henry VIII, who came via Concord, and Victoria, who didn't leave the railway station, enters York through this gateway. Even when our present Queen visits us by train, she does us the courtesy of coming round to Micklegate Bar to seek the Lord Mayor's consent to enter the city. The rural structure just to the left of the bridge where the car park is today. Two arches were made in halls to allow trains to reach the permanent station, which was opened in 1841. Because here, in the old station hotel, which is now part of the railway offices, where Queen Victoria, Prince Albert, and five of their children stopped for lunch in 1854. She obviously wasn't impressed, because she, she wasn't the only... On the left-hand side is the Meridian Hotel. Most of the old railway companies built luxury hotels next to their main stations. 
and this one was built by the Northeastern Railway in 1879 as a station hotel. It lies on the site of a road. On the right hand side of the road, just past the station, there are 20 gravestones. York was a crowded and unhealthy place to live in 1832 when an outbreak of cholera killed 185 people. An extra burial ground was opened here because there wasn't enough room in the churchyards. It was as a result of this epidemic that a proper sewerage system was built and three and a half miles of brick-lined sewers had been laid by 1837. Just past the burial ground stands a statue. There are two local legends about this statue. First, that Neiman stands where he does to overlook the work of the booking clerks at the railway station. And second, that the statue was originally of George Hudson, but the head was changed when financial scandals caused a new station in 1877 and crossed the river on Lendl Bridge. There has been a river crossing here since Roman times. So much to see that you could spend all day there. We don't call it the Railway Museum because a local centre with the railway station, but neither the city nor the railway wanted to pay for it. Arguments dragged on for 20 years until a start was finally made in 1860. After a year's work, the girders collapsed into the river. They were dredged out and sold to Scarborough, which used them to build a bridge linking the South Cliff to the town centre, and they're still there today. When Lendl Bridge finally opened, the ferryman found himself out of work. The city council organised a collection to buy him a horse and cart, so he stood. Our next bus stop is at the Museum Gardens. You can alight here to visit York Minster, which is straight ahead, or see the Yorkshire Museum, the ruins of St Mary's Abbey, or the remains of the Roman Wall, which are all in the Museum Gardens to your left. You may want to cross the road and walk down Lendl to see the judge's lodging, now a restaurant, the guild residence of the Lord Mayor. The ruins to the left of the bus stop are all that remains of St Leonard's Hospital with the adjoining St in 1539. Straight ahead is the west end of York Minster and the twin towers which hold the bells. In the left hand tower is Big Peter which rings out at midday every day. Big Peter weighs 12 tons and is so heavy that once he starts ringing, he just goes on until he runs out of momentum. Other cities may fire a gun at midday. We have Big Peter to tell us when it's lunchtime. He now shares the tower with six new bells cast for the Queen Mother's 100th birthday. The right hand. At the traffic lights, we turn left into St. Leonard's Place. Just beside the traffic lights on the corner of Duncan Place is the Red House, which is now an antique centre, but was built as the home of York's Member of Parliament, Sir William Robinson, in 1714. The City Council tried to buy it as a residence in 1539. They were allowed to fall into ruin. In the 1700s, builders held themselves to the stone and used it in the construction of other buildings. In St Leonard's Place, we pass a Georgian Crescent, built as houses in 1835, when the street was open. Run. Run. And the 60s, the Minster was sinking, but a few of the Minster, though, you can see one of its towers. And they went in to underpin it to stop it from sinking. And what they uncovered at the time was the Roman soldiers' military headquarters. Before that, we knew we had Romans in York. We didn't know where their military headquarters were. So the Romans actually, to get into their headquarters, actually had to go through this gateway. So this gateway, not this one, there would have been another one there at the time, but this gateway that stood on, which the Romans had put in. And they didn't think it would still be working, so they put some dye in it, and they actually watched it coming out into the ooze. So it's still working. You can go down into the crypt and uh, see all these things in the midst there. And what started in York as a sort of military base. It's 
part of the little folk museum. The York Castle Museum. You can see sort of part of it's inside the castle. It's still inside the museum. and a similar one on the other side of the river in the late 800s and William the Conqueror added wooden castles to them inside that tower on the mound. Yes, this is the stairway up. A few 
from the top. Bradford on the way to Glasgow. bus station Canal. Skipton.
Horizon 7. Passengers are reminded that in the interest of safety and security, that they must not leave any items of luggage unattended. Please ensure that your luggage is properly stored in the designated areas, and overhead luggage racks are provided. If you become aware of any unattended luggage, please report this to the on-train staff immediately. Business class accommodation, this sits in the front, middle and middle. There's gardens up there, I suspect there's the city walls maybe. This is the Hebden Bridge Railway Station. It's costing me £8 to go to Manchester. Where one of Chrissy's friends is going to meet me and show me some of the art spaces around there. Hebden Bridge is a lovely little village. Lots of art and craft in it. About halfway, it looks like on the train timetable, it's about halfway between York and Manchester. Manchester. Shopping arcade. Well, I've never been up. The, I've only been sort of on the ground floor. Yeah. It is that nice. building, and then to have that modern mm -hmm. theatre in the centre. So what's this called? The old. This is the Royal Exchange. It's Royal the old Exchange. coin exchange. You can see the camera is the old. You can see the old dating sort of. Oh, this is a, uh, a little theatre group. I mean, it'd be nice to make something like that in it. Well, the Horse and Bamboo Theatre. I think they've got something going on next weekend here. Paint work on that. Girl who cut flowers, that name. Manchester's answer to eye in the sky. This is nice, it's a quite an old place and this is called Winter Festival. It's quite nice when it's a sunny day. Church behind it there. Yeah, we'll, we'll walk down here and have a look. Everything changed. Manchester Cathedral. And, uh, at yeah. least it's been quite a nice day, really. Much better than 
much better than considering how awful it was yesterday. Oh yes, well, there's poor people with their cars. There's flooding everywhere. Yeah. Well that friend of Chrissy's who um, car, she got out of the car and five minutes later the car was floating. back to Hipton Bridge. There's a little canal boat just down on the other side there. This is the canal at Hebden Bridge. Goes all the way to Manchester, I think. A lot of canals up around York area. And this area is about halfway between Manchester and York. Number eight. Oh my God, there's hundreds of them. Please close all gates and pedals when leaving lock.
cold here today. That's glorious. It? Yeah, it's really nice there. Uh, yeah, it's picturesque, uh, isn't it? Pretty. Oh, there they are, sweetie pie. Look, they're following. <laughs> yeah, look at where they go up the hill. Slab. Yeah. Very small part. Walk through that different station. Up there. <coughs> Small square in the middle of the well, the back of block from the main road, main shop. All back at Hebden Bridge again. Those lines are in <coughs> all sorts of interesting places. Little market there just on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, or maybe Wednesdays and Thursdays, two days a week. They've got a bit of a Farmers Market, but it's got other bits of rubbish as well. You build a lot into these sort of triangular shapes in the corners of streets. And this is Market Street, which is the main street. You see shops right up the far end of it. Taking Bob for a walk. Look at their little back alley with their clothes lines. It's all going to be kind of made nice because these places at the back are going to be re renovated for living. So it could be a nice little courtyard area in here. And the 
way to Haworth. This is Haworth, Bronte country, and they've got Bronte all sorts around the place. Very steep hills. walkways around here <coughs> and you can, uh, it's rather nice country Some cottages This is the Bronte family home, parsonage. <coughs> now a museum, of course. I wasn't feeling so crap and the weather wasn't so crap, I'd go for some of these walks, they're quite lovely. <coughs> it's a little public walkway. The museum shop, I've actually modernised the inside of it and it's kind of got lost all its atmosphere. It's a bit of a shame, maybe they have to, but doesn't feel like somewhere that she might have lived. It doesn't appear that they've picked out to show which is the Bronte sister's grave. You have to go hunting. Oh, that's why the stairs are actually buried in the vault inside the church. <coughs> Looks like Coronation Street style allotments, <coughs> little sheds and little greenhouses and little plots with the veggies. Well, it just leads down to another part of the town, it's probably the everyday town, it's not touristy at all down there. A little steam engine, that's all right. Slate, the roofs, made of big huge slabs of slate. Looks like a Kiwi owned place here, Paranui. Delhi. The meeting house. <laughs> oh, 
and it was old Haworth. Haworth. I know the Bontes and the sisters. It's quite a small village. Quite small, quite nice. See it all in about half an hour. I've potted around for a couple of hours.